I had a uh, tumor in my upper abdomen about the size of the water bottle that's on this bicycle. It came back malignant melanoma. He did some chemo treatment and we thought we were kind of off the hook and home free and enjoying life. And then it was about June of 05 that we found out he had um, it spread to his lung. I went back and he said uh, the cancer had spread to my left adrenal gland and there was nothing more he could do for me. During the last uh, seven years, uh, I've pretty much had active cancer at one level or another. And they told me I had a 50-50 chance of living one year. And I remember leaving the room, the hospital room, and going about two doors down and started crying. It was like somebody just pulled a rug out from underneath you. And it's like your whole future is going to go down the tubes. I called UCLA and immediately I said, let me talk to Dr. Gillespie. I was pretty much hysterical and beyond anything. He got right on the phone. Now I know how busy he is, but he got right on the phone and I told him what happened. He goes, okay, Mrs. Bushnell, does your husband have any anxiety medicine? I'm like, yes, yes. He goes, you take it. I was also looking for uh, an environment where there was an upbeat approach to survival. And that's when my daughter-in-law went online and got all the information for the Johnson Cancer Center and the UCLA Cancer Center. I came to treat Steve at, actually uh, at a Lymphoma Research Foundation talk. Dr. Pinter Brown, who is my oncologist at UCLA Johnson, has been very supportive of my need or my desire to gain control of my body and get fit. He came up and asked me would I be his doctor, do I see patients? because he thought I uh, seemed very positive. So Mr. Cantor is a gentleman that came to see me after hearing about our program uh, on the internet. In advanced liver cancer, there aren't all that many options for patients, and he came to us looking for a clinical trial. I called and, and got into the program I'm in, and he started me on the clinical trial, which is the pills I'm taking right now. They're called the CA-182, they don't have a name. So the drug that Mr. Cantor is taking uh, is designed to cut off the blood supply to his tumor. This idea of angiogenesis, or blood vessel growth, we know is different in cancers than in normal cells. Dr. Rebus, uh, from the first day we met, we, uh, we really kind of hit it off. He came looking for new approaches, new possibilities of treatment. We're trying to tell the immune system that the bad guy is the cancer and you should attack it the same way that our immune system attacks viruses after a vaccine. Uh, I was kind of excited about uh, being in a clinical trial because no matter what the outcome, I felt it was going to help other people in the long run. In spite of the, you know, the, the daily tragedy that cancer is, um, Johnson Cancer Center definitely is a place where uh, you can see life. It's the most wonderful, caring place. Even if I, w I would be in the cafeteria crying, people would say, are you OK? You felt special coming here even though the circumstances were grave. When we go to see Dr. Finn and you go in to see him, um, he, he recognizes you, he knows you. Uh, when I was a high school student, my mother was diagnosed with advanced breast cancer. Over the, the next several months, uh, in dealing with my mother and her illness and her physicians, I really uh, saw that a career in medical oncology can really make a difference in patients' lives. I think it dates back to junior high. I had a very good friend who had Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. I like to have close relationships with my patients. I like to be able to help them in a time of need. Research that comes out of the laboratory and goes to the clinic has the potential of affecting thousands, hundreds, thousands, millions of people worldwide. And that's actually called translation because we translate the work that's done at the laboratory bench across the street into the clinic where it affects the lives of patients. The goal is to get drugs that are more effective and less toxic to the right patients. The 6th of February was really a special day for me. Came into you know, a room full of doctors. They shared with me that uh, it appears that there is no sign of cancer. Four months later when we had the second set of, of scans, uh, showing that the lung lesions are, were nearly gone, we 
close to cut apart in the, in the clinic. We all started hugging each other and uh, being very happy. The second scan, I was clear, and now I've had two clear scans. They got the results and they said that uh, the tumors were stable. So it took a little while, but, um, but it was, it's the most effective treatment I've had in nine years. I thought, boy, I'm, you know, I'm getting something done. This may extend my life a, a little longer. And uh, hopefully it does, or if not, I'll help somebody else. There won't just be a cure for cancer. And we've redefined cure in a lot of ways, too. It used to be that we considered a patient cured when the cancer was completely eradicated. We hope that we have so many treatments now that we can start to think about it as a chronic disease. Maybe not a disease, a chronic condition, let's put it that way. We want to keep the cancer under control. Maybe there's a few cancer cells left in the patient, but they're not impacting that patient's life. And the patient's able to live a both a normal quality of life and a normal lifespan. And try and minimize the impact that the cancer has on the person and allow them to be a person, you know, not a, a, a person with cancer, but a person who is dealing with a, with a problem. I feel good. I, I have a good appetite. I eat good. I sleep good. The doctor says I'm healthy. <laughs> with the exception I have cancer. What's very exciting about the translational programs here, which are supported by seed grants, is that this money supports junior investigators that are focused on projects that have a global reach. And what a seed grant does is it provides the very first funding for an innovative idea that one of our members has. It allows someone to strike out in a very different and unique way and hopefully amass some information with which they can present themselves to the scientific community and say, I'm a good bet, give me some research funds, I'm going to do good things. It's not an exaggeration to say that an $8,000 seed grant contributed by members of the community grew into an FDA-approved drug, Herceptin, which has had an impact on patients with the most aggressive form of breast cancer. With proper funding and proper stimulation of cancer research, we will find more answers for more cancers as time goes on. Through our work in the development of such targeted therapies as Herceptin for breast cancer, Gleevec for chronic myeloid leukemia, Avastin for colon cancer, and a host of other targeted molecules this is a picture of our son, Chris, his wife, Carrie, the oldest boy, Caden, who's five, and Kyler, who will be two next month. So they're the light of our life. <laughs> Every time I see a patient, I think there is a certain amount of their story that rubs off on me. He's given us hope. Let us believe and know that we are capable of celebrating many more birthday parties with our grandchildren. That's why I'm here. I, I come to work. I'm happy with what I do. I work with great people. I feel the support here. Every meal's a, a banquet, and every day is a holiday. You know, I used to say the words, but I really didn't mean it. But now, you know, I really am experiencing that thanks to the center. Over these nine years, the survivors that I have met have all had more opportunities for longer lives and living through and beyond cancer and never being a cancer victim, but being a cancer survivor. He's very strong. And okay. he's doing great. We were planning funerals. And uh, uh, and now we are figuring out what we're going to do with our life. <laughs>